How's it going? I'm Stu Mashwitz from Red Giant, and I am here today to talk about achieving realistic professional visual effects composites in less time by, by any means necessary, as you can see from the kind of old photo there. Um, if you don't know me or my background, I'm a filmmaker, photographer. Uh, I've been a visual effects artist uh, for many years, uh, and I'm the chief creative officer at Red Giant Software, making cool tools for you guys to use to do your stuff. Uh, before that, I had a visual effects company uh, called The Orphanage, and before that, I worked for Industrial Light and Magic doing special effects for Star Wars movies and that kind of thing. Um, the uh, title of this talk is a bit of a mouthful. It, it could be shortened to just visual effects compositing and after effects, and I actually even considered asking Adobe to let me uh, add a support group to the end of it. Now, why do we need a support group for visual effects compositing in, in After Effects? Well, truly, like, sometimes it's wonderful making movies with After Effects, and sometimes it can be a little difficult, and some of that has to do with the experience, and some of that also has to do with some of the public perception around it. After Effects has not always been regarded as like the tool for professional film and video compositing, but I have a long history of kind of denying that, and it goes back quite a ways even to my time at Industrial Light and Magic when I led a small group called the Rebel Mac Unit, and we kind of bridged a gap between motion graphics, which we all know After Effects is the best at, stuff like these display screens, and visual effects, which is what it started to feel like when we were compositing these shots into a shot like that where we're dollying in on Will Smith, motion tracking and blurring it into the background, matching the grain, all these things that we were, that were visual effects, especially when the director comes up and says, oh, by the way, also I would like a spaceship in the shot and now suddenly my little team of people on beige Macintosh computers are making a spaceship at Industrial Light & Magic using a computer that just anyone could buy and compositing it together in After Effects. And uh, by the way, we did all of this a long time ago, before After Effects had some features that you might be used to now, like 3D and uh, playback. So this is 1997, After Effects got RAM preview in 1999. So I've been doing it wrong for a very long time. Um, so why? <laughs> why? Why am I so hell-bent on always doing it wrong? Well, I think the answer has a lot to do with something that matters a ton to me, which is accessibility, right? Um, when I was a kid, I loved movies and I wanted to make movies. and all of the gear that you see around here, the camera cranes and the green screens and the LED lights and everything, that was just a fantasy to me. Like I, I dreamed of being able to use that stuff someday, but I, I didn't have that. I had something a little more like this. And, um, and yet I still had the aspiration to make my little movies look like a big movie. Um, and it matters a lot to me to be able to kind of fake big production value, and After Effects has been my partner in crime in that for a very long time. In fact, I even wrote a book about low-budget indie action movie filmmaking and published it before consumer cameras were even HD. So, like I said, doing it wrong. And like I said, After Effects has always been there at my side. And before I came out here today, I did a little search on my hard drive for After Effects projects, and the search stopped at about 30,000 <laughs> projects saying, do you really want to do this to yourself, looking at this? Uh, um, I've color corrected entire feature films in After Effects. I've, you know, done visual effects for big movies in After Effects. And uh, last year, uh, I released a 3D animated short done in this vector graphic style here, animated entirely inadvisedly in After Effects. If you'd like to learn more about that, you can check it out at, uh, at redgiant.com. Um, I recently got a fresh chance to kind of dust off my doing it wrong filmmaking skills here. This uh, dude on the left here is my buddy Mark Andrews. Uh, we went to film school together. Uh, he is a professional director, uh, worked at Pixar and on a bunch of great movies. And he asked me to be his cinematographer 
on a low budget kind of action horror short film. Um, we shot over the course of nine days in the forests in Northern California, and you can kind of see my little DV Rebel rig there has matured a little bit over the years, but pretty much still the same. Sony A7S II there. And at the end of the shoot, we wound up with roughly 35, give or take, uh, visual effect shots, which I somehow volunteered slash got roped into doing all myself. Um, maybe a little bit of that was because I really felt responsible for <laughs> the great number of visual effect shots that were just me fixing my horrible mistakes in cinematography because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but some of them were legit complicated visual effects shots. And uh, we're going to take a look at a specific one today. Uh, this FW3 first, first look at the future city. So I'm just going to show you the shot. This is the final shot. Our hero looks out over this city of the future. And uh, this is the background plate that we shot in the Oakland Hills. And it's just our actor going up to a, a blank skyline on a very kind of misty, foggy day. We then went through an extensive design process. This is what it li it's like when you work with an A-list artist like Mark at some place like Pixar. You know, you get this amazing kind of frame IO feedback that really just like, just gets you know the spirit of the shot really working. This is, thank you, thank you for that, Mark. That was super helpful. Uh, actually, the truth is we had a ton of great support and help on this shot. The matte painting in the background was done uh, by an artist named Paul Topolos. He did a great job of it and provided also those little hero spaceships that you see flying around the background, like the, the, the big kind of freighter that's moving and a little one that's taking off there. Um, and I even managed to rope a friend of mine into doing the 3D animation of the ship that flies overhead in Cinema 4D. So all I've got to do is, uh, you know, put it all together. It's simple, right? Well, of course not. So. Why is it not simple to just put the shot together? Uh, well, visual effects compositing is a real job. And I mentioned earlier that I love to do it in After Effects. There are some strengths that After Effects has for this kind of work. And let's be honest, some, some, maybe some weaknesses. Let's talk about the strengths first, though. Um, to me, the most important one is that After Effects is just a wonderful creative environment. You know, it's, it's Photoshop with a timeline. You can explore and try different things out. You can move a layer, grab it, and just intuitively reorder it and work with that layered interface. And everything just kind of is quick and intuitive. And you can quickly kind of figure out what your shot should be. In our case, like that map painting is in the background of multiple shots. I have them all in the same project. And I move it in one. It moves in all of them. And we could line it up and get it fitting. And by extension of that, After Effects is a great place to build up a creative effect that you just kind of don't yet know what it's going to look like. If you've got a, a force field or an energy blast or some kind of magical effect and you kind of don't know what it's going to look like or the client doesn't know what it's going to look like, which, let's be honest, is the, the, mostly the case, um, it's a wonderful place to just explore and play with different techniques. Uh, it totally matters that After Effects is so well integrated with the other Adobe things. You know, our, our matte painting was done in Photoshop, and to be able to just import the layers and have it all work, that was really great. But my favorite are kind of the surprising, like, nifty things that After Effects has in it, like warp stabilizer and 3D camera tracking and pixel motion blur and rotobrush, like, more than I could even fit on this slide. Like, After Effects has a really cool toolbox of of, of tricks for the lazy visual effects compositor like me. Um, but you know, it's not all, all roses out there. There might be a few weaknesses here, but I don't want to offend anybody, so maybe we'll just rephrase it like things that After Effects has historically not prioritized. And this is a much shorter list. It's basically just that dreaded of all compositing task, which is just putting the thing on top of the other thing, like just actually compositing. Now, why do I say that? Why shouldn't After Effects be amazing at putting one thing on top of another? It's got layers. That's what layers are. We think of a visual effects shot as A over B over C over D, and so on. This is After Effects zone, right? But the truth is, this is out visual effects compositing doesn't work this way. In visual effects compositing, the layers all need to talk to each other. 
objects in the same scene interact with each other. They cast shadows on, our, on each other. They blend together. They are shot on the same piece of film or digital negative, so they have the same grain or compression artifacts. The, broadly, you could call this integration. So here's just a real quick visual effects shot that I did for a friend's short where he had this prop knife that didn't look realistic and I replaced it with a real knife. And I want you to look carefully at that last step there. In fact, I'm going to do something that no visual effects artist would ever want, which is I'm going to zoom in on it for you. This is just the knife element composited in the shot A over B. And this is what it looks like integrated. And you can see now that like the light is bouncing off of his finger onto the knife, and the light is wrapping around the background onto the handle. I'll go one more time back to the before and the after. That's what integration means, and if you want your shots to be realistic, that's what you have to do. This is a shot I didn't have anything to do with, but this is a shot that from a Transformers film that every time I see it, it gives me heart palpitations because of all the integration that needs to be done. That's a computer-generated robot being placed behind and in front of, for some reason, a lens flare that was obviously in the plate, and then another lens flare is being added on top of it. This, this shot must have been an absolute nightmare <laughs> to composite, but the result is that it looks very integrated and realistic. The problem with doing that in After Effects is that it requires that dreaded thing, it requires pre-composing, nesting your compositions one into the other. And when you do that, After Effects kind of isn't your buddy anymore. It was like such a good time when we were just working with layers, it was easy to understand, everyone can understand A over B over C over D, but now we've just got a list of co compositions with no real visual indicator of how they work together, and they're just listed alphabetically, which let's be honest, means that they probably look like this and you spend a lot of time hunting around trying to figure out where you did that one thing. Unless you're a crazy person like me and you're one of the few people who actually ever opens this window in After Effects where, believe it or not, After Effects does have nodes and <laughs> you can see how your comps relate to each other. And this is actually the project for the shot we're looking at. And you can kind of see how the yellow ones up there are where I'm making some of the spaceships and then the green ones are the output and the red are kind of where I'm putting it all together. This really helps me a lot, but sometimes I feel like the anal retentive chef when I'm working in here, like I'm spending as much time making this look pretty as I am making the shot look pretty. So the reason I show this to you, though, is just that I want to impress on you one idea, which is that After Effects is a platform, right? It's not just a creative tool for layering things on top of each other. It's actually a place where you can build a machine to put your shot together for you. When you stack layers, you're building an image. When you pre-compose like this, you're building a machine that makes your images. OK, so back to our shot and our, our beautiful creative design process here. Um, it started with, after we kind of got the rough layout going, that's my handiwork, by the way, um, 3D tracking, right? After Effects has a beautiful 3D tracker. We got a pretty good 3D track on the shot right out of the box. I was really happy. Now, keying. This is a really hard shot to key. It's actually really hard to preserve all the details in the, in the trees and stuff in front of those clouds as they're moving by. But I did this all using After Effects built-in tools, combining a bunch of keys. It worked great. The only thing it couldn't do a great job on was the little teddy bear. And so for that, I used Rotobrush. Super quick and almost kind of magical to be able to get that kind of a mat without having to go to all the pain of hand rotoing it yourself. So you know, so far, After Effects is totally kicking this shot's butt. Um, but there was a part of the shot that I had been postponing for a while because I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to do it, which was the background spaceships, not the hero ones. There's actually multiple layers of background spaceships here. And here you can see like these little tiny dots that are kind of flickering. And then the real hard one is these guys, these little traffic you know, patterns here flying in and out of the city that are a little more recognizable spaceships. In fact, I'll zoom in on them so you can see them a little bit better. I worked on some of the Coruscant shots at ILM, and that was a really essential thing for us to make the city look big, was to give you a sense of scale through vehicles that you kind of intuitively recognized how big they were. So if you know me at all, you know that where, what I did was I built a, a freeway simulator inside of After Effects. Um, so remember, the title is doing this in less time, so I've sped this up a tiny bit. 
Uh, I animated one solid moving away from the camera like that, and then I used expressions to create additional solids that, when, that would fly along that path, but offset in time by a random amount. And then when I duplicate that solid, I wind up with bunches and bunches of solids that all move at different speeds in different directions back and forth along that path. And I even created a little user interface for myself using expression control effects. So I've built a tool for flying orange solids into the scene. And that probably would have been enough for me because I love an orange solid. But now it's time to turn the orange solid into a spaceship. So I made it into a gray solid, mirrored it, and then I added a mask, and I actually keyframed the mask to kind of morph the spaceship through a bunch of random kind of silly sci-fi spaceship shapes. Did the same for the profile view, and then I stacked them together into kind of a cardboard cutout toy spaceship. Nodes, nodes, nodes. Then I, put a I figured out a way to kind of subtract those from each other and make a slice that was kind of the middle of the spaceship. And then the last step was to create a texture map for it just using fractal noise to make a nice spaceship panel texture and a little bit of shading. And now I've got this weird animation of this morphing spaceship. But the next step is the essential step, time remapping with an expression on it that picks a random frame. So now every time I duplicate that spaceship, I get a new, different, weird-looking spaceship. Some of them kind of cool, some of them a little odd, but they're all you know, in the same family of spaceship, but you know, different models, and I can have as many of them as I want. Now remember what I said, After Effects is a platform. That orange solid was already used in that other comp. I've now replaced it with these spaceships, so as soon as I go back here, I've got after I do some typing and some nerding, <laughs> I've got an infinite supply of these spaceships. All I have to do is duplicate that layer a hundred times. And I have to say, that's kind of an exciting moment when the first time you do it, you're like, hey, it's going to work. <laughs> I got a bunch of cool little spaceships flying around. Um, and as soon as I did that, I realized they didn't look different enough, so I went back in and modified my system to add that so that the wings would have different angles on them. And as soon as I jump back into the final comp, they're all updating, you know? That's, that's the beauty of, of pre-composing. Um, now it's time to do those little dots in the background. Now, working with Red Giant, of course, I, my first thought is I'm going to use trap code particular. You know, the dots are like particles. I'm going to fly them on a path. That didn't work so great. So then I, I stroked a line and tried to make these little dots moving through it. I didn't like the way that looked either. And luckily, I remembered trap code form. Trap code form has this mode called strings where it just makes these lovely little layers of particles that you can move around using fractal noise or fluid dynamics. So I wound up with just this. It's just exactly what I wanted, just layers of little dots that feel loosely organized into a traffic pattern. So let's go back and just look at that again. So there's my cardboard cutout spaceships and my flickering dots spaceships. And I'm feeling pretty good about this. Like, I'm kind of digging this, and I've had a lot of fun doing it. That was maybe you know, a day's worth of work playing with all that stuff. And now, all I gotta do is stick the hero spaceship flying over the background, right? Um, should be simple, but of course, as we already know, I've already kind of spoiled it. It's not. You stick the spaceship over the background, it doesn't look good. This shot has a lot of atmosphere, it's got a lot of light bouncing around. So I turned to a new plugin from Red Giant called SuperComp. SuperComp has its own layered interface that works with the After Effects layers and its own effects that are designed just for visual effects compositing. And remember I talked about that light wrapping from the background around the foreground? Well, we have an effect called light wrap. And you can do light wrap a lot of ways in After Effects, but you will bump into those limitations having to do with pre-comping and where After Effects gets its pixels from. Supercom makes it a lot easier, but first I want to show you about why we want to do light wrap. So this is just a non-visual effects shot from the original Star Wars. Luke running out from behind this little hut here. And I want to show you how different Luke looks when he's against the sky versus against the hut. So I actually cut him out. Look how different that is. Look at how, how photographically different he is when he's in front of a bright thing versus a dark thing. That's light wrap, and that's it happening in real life, right? So we want to simulate that in our shot, so I'm going to apply light wrap. And then I'm going to do something that 
everyone who uses After Effects knows you can't do, which is I'm going to move the layer that I've applied light wrap to, but it still works. That's because SuperComp knows about visual effects compositing, and it knows how the layers are moving, and it's putting the right thing in the right place. Now I'm applying haze, and the last one I'm applying here is volume fog. Now, volume fog is a little bit over, over, uh, over the top for this shot. You know, not every shot looks like this, but every visual effects artist wants every shot to look like this. So I'm going to apply it very subtly. What it does is it does this kind of volumetric shadow, and I'm just going to put this sort of light source up and to the left, and then I'm going to soften it up and just make it very subtle so that I get the sense that this spaceship isn't alone in the world, that it's integrated with the environment and casting just a little bit of a shadow on the air around us, you know? You shouldn't notice this effect. It's like seasoning, but you should notice if it's missing. And then the last step is I'm taking that haze effect and I'm animating the amount, just using the regular old After Effects keyframe editor here so that as the spaceship flies away, it gets more and more hazy. And I actually use SuperComp twice on the shot, once to help me composite the uh, foreground over the entire background as well. So SuperComp has kind of stepped in where After Effects maybe historically hasn't been so strong and helped me really in very short order getting the shot to be look, look integrated. But now I want to hand it back to After Effects because this is one of my favorite little last tweaks. Because I shot this and because I knew what the visual effects pipeline was going to be, I, f I shot it with a very fast shutter. And so the actual shot has very little motion blur. But ultimately, I want the shot to have motion blur. So at the very last step, I added the pixel motion blur effect, which magically tracks every pixel in the frame and adds motion blur only where needed. And so the motion blur actually blends across the seam between my background visual effects and the foreground live action and adds just that final little step of realism. And so here's the finished shot altogether. Achieved you know, in a very short amount of time and with a budget of zero dollars. And After Effects and SuperComp work together great on this. So, achieving realistic professional composites in less time, let's, I mean, fair is fair here, let's do a little scorecard. Uh, is this shot realistic? I mean, it's a spaceship flying around, I don't know. I, I guess, maybe, I don't know. Is it professional? Absolutely not. I was not paid to do this. Is it a composite? Yes. That's one out of four. Did I do it in less time? Well, I did it in about a week plus about a year, because remember, I wasn't getting paid. So again, that one's a little up for grabs. But regardless of how I did on the scorecard here, uh, there are a few things that I'd like you to kind of take away from this. After Effects is a platform. It's a place for you to build a machine for making your shot. Uh, don't, it's, it's, it's fine to kind of start with layers, but at some point you have to kind of break out of that and start thinking about ways to make After Effects work for you. Be lazy, build a machine that does the hard work for you. In other words, build systems, not stacks. If you're comfortable in Photoshop, that's a great start, but After Effects is gonna really start to sing for you when you get comfortable with working with its nested compositions. So pre-comping is not your enemy, but I gotta say, you can save a lot of it if you use SuperComp. So, if you have any questions about anything you've seen here, we've collected kind of all the links and information about everything that's going on here at this URL. Uh, I'm Stu Mashwitz from Red Giant, and that has been my talk. Thank you guys so much for coming. I'll be available for questions. Uh, back there afterwards. Thank you guys all very much. Really appreciate you coming out. <laughs>